Hey guys and welcome to another video and this time we're going to take a look at the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Pro and this is the non-Wi-Fi version of it so the price for this is $337 without Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi version of this costs only 270 bucks so this board is actually going to be used in my main rig and the parts that will be used is a Ryzen 9 3900X 32GB Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200MHz and a Palette RTX 2080 Super Game Rock Edition Corsair RM750X and two SSDs one Kingston A2500GB NVMe SSD and an Intel 660p 1TB, which is also an NVMe. So let's start by having a look at what it comes with. You have all your manuals and a driver disk. And you also get the screws for its M.2 slots. Mine is already mounted with my SSDs under it. And you get a 4-pin RGB extension cable, an Aorus badge, 4 SATA cables, and this G connector for your front panel and uh, it is very useful. Makes the front panel connectors mount with ease. Well, let's take a closer look on the rear I.O. We find that it has an integrated I.O. shield along with four USB 2.0 ports, three USB 3.0 ports, two USB 3.1 ports and a USB 3.1 Type-C port, so it is also equipped with an HDMI port and the normal audio jacks, and it also has optical out, and the line out jack supports DSD audio or direct stream digital, and it also has one Intel Gigabit Ethernet port, and let's have a closer look at the rest of this board. So we have a 12 plus 2 phase VRM, and the heatsink has direct touching heat pipe and fins array and the temps are actually really good and as a normal ATX board it comes equipped with four dim slots which supports up to 128 gigabytes of memory and up to 4400 megahertz and it also has support for unbuffered ECC memory and taking a closer look, we can find that this board comes with a platform chipset fan. And here is a sound test when it ran at full speed. And the fan is guaranteed to last for 60,000 hours. And as most boards at this price point, we have a Q flash button or more commonly known as a BIOS flashback button. And so let's have a look at the internal connectors. First up. We have the normal 24 pin power connector and a 8 pin and a 4 pin for the CPU. The 4 pin is mostly used to achieve higher overclocks. We also find 7 fan headers, 2 for CPU and 5 for system or case fans. And we get 5 RGB headers, 2 are 5 volt 3 pin and 3 of them are 12 volt 4 pin. And we get our normal front panel headers. And we have four USB headers. One is USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C, two are USB 3.2 Gen 1, and two USB 2.0. And then we also have three PCIe 16X slots. Two of them are equipped with ultra durable PCIe armor, which is meant to provide extra strength to the slot since most GPUs nowadays are quite big and heavy. And it also has support for SLI and Crossfire. And this board also has two PCIe 1X slots and two PCIe M.2 slots that comes with heat sinks. And it also has six SATA 6 gig connectors, which has support for RAID 0, 1 and 10. And moving over to the BIOS. Well, I can say that it has all the features that I want. From a board, it is easily navigated and has a ton of tweaking options. Really the only thing that I would love to see is that they implement RGB fusion 
to the BIOS, so we don't need to use the software because it's always, at least my preference is to control it from the BIOS. But maybe one day that will happen. We just have to wait and see. Gigabyte, please implement RGB fusion in your BIOS. So what do I think about this board? I think it's a really solid board. It has two layers of copper on the PCB. It's a six layer PCB, I believe. And uh, it's stable. It has a lot of great things to it. As well as the little chipset fan here. It is very, very quiet. So the features in the BIOS are great. You have a ton of options there for overclocking and other interesting stuff. So I would definitely recommend this board. So thank you all for watching. So be sure to leave a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And leave a comment down below. And I'll see you all in another tech video very soon.